Dick Lee is with a company called Value Transformations, and he's somebody who not only advocates that the automotive industry transition to an, into electric vehicles, he's calling for a complete transformation of the industry. Dick, thanks so much for joining me this morning, and explain, what, what, what do you mean about this transformation? John, uh, good morning. What do I mean about the transformation? So, John, every uh, market, major industry is being disrupted. We don't like that word. We use the word transformation. The auto industry is no exception. There are major changes occurring, and the end states are no. And those end states are, in fact, six transformation axes. And maybe we can pull up that first slide and look at them. So these six things are all occurring at the same time. The thing to understand is that these end states are fixed. Where we are today is that white circle in the middle there. That's where we are today. And so the first transformation axis is going from the internal combustion engine to the electric motor. The way we buy and sell cars is going to change. Auto dealerships are going to look a lot different tomorrow. We're going to go to omni-channel retail. The cars and vehicles we have on the roads today are bright, but they don't talk to each other. We're going to transition from unconnected to connected vehicles. Probably we won't buy or own cars. We are going to have a fleet model where we can literally dial up whatever vehicle we want on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, wherever we are. and We'll pay a monthly fee for that or a, a yearly fee for that. And then one which is highly controversial, we're moving from driver to driverless cars. And then finally, in the U.S., everybody thinks the way to get from A to B is to drive a car. There are other ways we can get from A to B, including light rail, buses, trains, and so on, even a bicycle. And so we're moving from where we are today to mobility as a service. And those are the six transformation axes that are in place today. Those end states are fixed. How and when we get there, we don't know. But the key is that every major manufacturer or tier one supplier or order dealer needs to understand this and model their business to prepare for this for the future. Dick, it sounds like Tesla is the only one that's coming anywhere close to what you're talking about here. Maybe not the multimodal way of uh, uh, traveling, unless right. you want to include SpaceX in there and, and the boring company. Right. But th there's a lot for the traditional auto industry to, to be able to meet your transformation here. Are, are any of the traditional ones coming close to this? The answer is no. If I had to define the closest one at this point, I would say it is probably VW Group and fast followed by Volvo, which, as you know, is a Chinese company. But most of them are still waking up to what's going on. And the problem for them is that they're fast running out of time. I mean, Tesla, as you know, has already got a million plus cars on the roads of the world, Gigafactory uh, 3 in Shanghai is doing very well. Game Factory 4 is coming online in Germany. So there's a huge amount of catch-up that, that they need to uh, to put into play here. How how would you advise traditional automakers, and I, I guess you'd have to throw suppliers into this as well. Yes, how would you exactly. advise them to be able to make this transformation? I think it's going to be dependent on each company, John, but ideally if you could separate out what you're doing in these transformation axes to what you're doing with your traditional products that you're making today, whether it's ICEs or hybrids, I think you should do that because one weighs down the other. The other thing you need to do, and I don't know how to address this, if I take VW as an example, there are three primary things going on. Herbert Diesel, who is the CEO, is committed to going to electric vehicles. The union members are not. And the reason, quite simply, is this, that the number of people that you have online in assembly drops dramatically when you go from an ICE to an electric vehicle. So they see job loss. They don't like that. And then the third group is the shareholders who see them making a lot of money off these internal combustion engine machines. And they see the margins going down when you can convert to electric vehicles. So those three primary drivers are taking place. And each company has to figure out how do we manage this and, and address these six transformation axes. It's not, it's not a simple problem. In fact, really what you're getting at is this is going to be a societal issue, not just a, a traditional automaker one, because jobs, 
and profits are very legitimate concerns. Yes, there's an individual in Germany. His name is Peter Altmaier. He's the director of finance, and he is very, very concerned about the impact not on uh, Daimler, BMW, and VW Group. He's concerned about the economy of Germany because so many jobs are tied directly to the auto industry. And if they don't get their act together and move quickly, he's concerned about where the German economy is going to go in the future. And that obviously got- impacts Europe, and then that impacts the rest of the world. Right. But I mean, look, we all know the future is electric. We can argue on how soon we're going to get there, but the future right. is electric. These yes. jobs are going to go away. Yes. I mean, it, 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 it's not as if Daimler and uh, Volkswagen and BMW can afford to keep people on the payroll if there's nothing that they can contribute to. Right. These people have got to be retrained. They've got to do something else. And, and so that's why Altmaier is involved in this, because he knows that we've got to retrain these people and we've got to get them working somewhere else doing other things. So you've identified the changes that have got to take place, the the, the six different axes of transformation. Yes. How do yes. you make it happen? <laughs> How do you, uh, uh, so that's a very that's a very interesting uh, uh, question. So if I look at the first one, going from the internal combustion engine to the electric motor, Tesla is they don't have to worry about making internal combustion engine cars. They're already on that track, uh, and and they're very very bright at what they do. They're not what I would describe as being a traditional auto company. They're more a an IT AI. A machine learning kind of company. So they look at the car as more of a laptop, which has got four wheels and some, and some seats in it. So their whole approach to developing the, the vehicle of the future is entirely different uh, from Detroit or uh, Wolfsburg or anywhere else around the planet. Uh, the, the, the other concern that I have, John, is this, that there's interdependence between these transformation axes. So if all you do is focus on going from the ICE to an electric motor, you, you're, you're, you're missing out on going from uh, uh, un, uh, unconnected to connected cars, and you're missing out on going from driver to driverless. If you make a change in the battery management system from a software standpoint, you better know what that impact is going to be on those other aspects of the car, like going from driver to driverless or going from unconnected to connected cars. You can't work on one thing. You've got to work on all six because one may impact the other. Maybe I've just made it too complicated, John. Have I? I I'm not sure. No, no, no. I, 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 I don't think you have at all. You know, okay. we're all learning as you explain this. And I, I, I believe I'm, I'm still with you on this. Okay. Uh, one of the other things we talked about be, before setting up the interview is you, yes. you, you talked about measuring sentiment and using Twitter as that. What kind of sentiment are you measuring and how are you going about doing it? What a great question. We've been, uh, we have some software called BEV Current TMS. TMS stands for Text Mining Solutions. And the name of the game is to access Twitter. And you and I talked about this before. There are something like 6,000 tweets a second. So and there's a huge amount of junk that's being put out. What you need is software that can literally l- look at text and make decisions about whether or not you want to keep it. What we do is we configure the software. So you're looking at users or organizations. They may be car companies. They may be uh, uh, companies like yours who, who print or, and, and uh, share information. And we also have some keywords that we uh, uh, key on to. Some, we have over 500 organizations that we track and over 100 keywords. With that, we can collect tweets that have a user organization or and a keyword that's mentioned in the same tweet. And that's what we save. And we accumulate something like, right now we're between 2,000 and 5,000 tweets a day. That's a lot of information. We also... Uh, look now for sentiment analysis. We, we, we do the first one to look at fact-based stuff. And then the second is those tweets that people, where people make a, a, a statement about the car. The first day that we did this, we were looking at Polestar 2. And I know you know about Polestar 2. Polestar 2 is already now being delivered in Europe. And there were two sentiments on the first day, uh, 
two different people, different locations, and the first person said, the Polestar 2 is a wonderful car, but the fob, so the key fob, sucks. The second one said, this is an absolutely fantastic car, but I will not buy it until they fix the key fob. That's what I mean by sentiment analysis. So we're now looking for statements that people are making unsolicited when they're not responding to a survey. They're giving you these unsolicited responses. And that's what you need to understand, how Polestar and Volvo could deliver this car with a key fob that apparently is a piece of junk. I don't know, but they did. And they need to fix it now. <laughs> yeah, that's fascinating. What other kinds of sentiments are you tracking? Is it vis-a-vis -vis the six uh, axes of transformation that you're trying no, to pour in it's, on? It's, it's anything that people may say. I mean, as you well know, because you've been in this business a long time, they're talking about panel gaps or paint quality or seat belts or seat comfort or visibility or design, the attractiveness of the grill. If you look at BMW, I will tell you there's a whole field of people out there who hate the BMW grill on their electric vehicles. They can't stand them. So it's all aspects of the car. It's not the six transformation axes. It's the car itself that we're catching the sentiments on. You know, it's interesting because automakers do track comments in, you know, user groups and chat rooms and things like that. Sounds yeah. like you've developed the software to, to bore into this and get an answer very quickly. So it's in Twitter, and uh, and my statement is this. If you're looking for a source of information that's relevant to what you're looking at and you want to look at it in real time, Twitter is your best information source. That is fascinating. Dick, uh, I know we could talk all afternoon if we wanted to, but what other points would you like to get across in what you're preaching to the industry? The, 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 this is, the I think, the, the fundamental one that the end states are in place, they're already defined, when and how we get there is unknown. Although I'll throw this in to say that Tony Sieber, who wrote the book Clean Disruption, has predicted that no major manufacturer will produce a car with an internal combustion engine by the year 2030. I think that's a little aggressive. But, but the thing is that each manufacturer in order to survive and thrive, must manage through these transformation axes. You need to be able to make decisions, good decisions quickly. And right now, I don't think they're able to move fast enough. And Tesla yeah. is widening the gap. It, it, it really is. Hey, there, there was one other slide that we had. That, you have a quote from Peter Drucker, the very uh, well-known corporate anal uh, analyst. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, can we bring that one up? Yeah, explain this that the future has already happened and now we have to identify it. Well, what does that mean? So what he's saying is if you're trying to predict the future 50 years from now, it's impossible. But the reality is that we now know enough in terms of where the future is going that in fact the future has already occurred. And, what, and so his words are, it, it is possible in other words to identify and prepare for the future that has already happened. And that's the basis of these six transformation axes. Those six end states are fixed. And what you must do, whether you're GM or Ford or Toyota or Volkswagen, is to recognize those and manage your business so that you come out at the end of this doing very, very well. Some of these auto manufacturers are not going to survive. Let, let's see if I can try to uh, restate that. And you tell me if I've got this right. Okay. There is already a world out there. That is electric, it's connected, and it's autonomous. Yes. And now it's your job, Mr. and Mrs. Car Company, to figure out how to get to that future. Correct. That's it in a nutshell, John. What, we, 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 we spent eight minutes, ten minutes to get to that. That's it right there. <laughs> <laughs> Dick Lee, I got to tell you, this has been a fascinating discussion. A brief one. We're going to have to come back to you at a, some point in the future and go into more detail. But really want to thank you for your time today. John, thank you. You've been terrific. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Great to talk with you.